And as soon as I realized, look, the thinking is coming from the ego, the self. I know how I can control the situation. I know what I can do. And billionaires and people who are very, very successful, you know, they say, have pity on them. You know, we're always jealous and envious of people who do well in life. But their whole life may become, in a lot of cases, dependent on doing well. And that's, that's pleasure. We have the pleasure with the drugs, the alcohol, the food. It's the same thing. Pleasure is momentary. If you want true joy and happiness, you're never going to find it in being successful, in being very, with the money. You're not going to find it in your addictions. It only causes much pain on the other side. And I'm going to go, I always use the example of a man who climbed Mount Everest. He had all of that money. He spent years of planning. He got frostbite going up there. He maimed his body and everything. He was, it was pleasurable for like a few moments or maybe, maybe for an hour, two hours. I always said, probably on the way home, he got an argument with the taxi cab driver when he got home or got, an, got into an argument with his wife. And the other problem was when he went on the internet, when he got home, he realized there was somebody else who climbed the mountain seven times. So there you go. He had to go back and do it again. He was miserable, miserable, miserable until he had to go through the pain, the agony of doing it again for that momentary pleasure. So with our addictions, what do we want? The momentary pleasure, the God-given grace. That's the grace in these steps and brings us to that religious awakening. So anyway, so then, but step three says it all. But let me read in the book here. So pretty much I'm going through one, two. I'm going to do this quickly because you know what? Again, it's a simple program. I, I mean, we could read and study this and go by line by line. But I'm saying, if you want to write here, just know, let go. Let go of all. Just realize, do you realize the truth will set you free? You heard of that, right? That all of this thinking is false. You know, a guy got up in a meeting once and he said, look, he goes, I wake up in the morning, I have my first thought. He goes to myself, he goes, he thinks that's not true. And he goes, hey, you know what? I have my second thought. He goes, that's not true either. So we believe this thinking, thinking, the mind, there's no reason to. All the answers are in here, but we feel it through the heart. When we're centered, you know, people say, look, today I got to go do something. They'll say, hey, you know, you're saying to me, don't do it on self-will or, you know, but how am I going to go get a job? Or if I don't do something, if I don't go to the grocery store, if I don't do it, it has to be by self-will. I have to control it. You know what you do? Next time you have a big occasion, thing you have to do in your life, this is what you do. Say you feel you have to go out and get a job or whatever it is, or, you know, go do your, whatever you have to do and you don't want to do it, just sit and meditate and pray. And you know what? They intuitively, it says in Nine Step Promises, you'll intuitively know. Step 11 talks about prayer meditation. Well, quickly, since the steps are here, Step 4 talks about these defects of character that are keeping out the sunlight of spirit. It's our, it's our envy, our jealousy, right? You know, all of these things, resentment. Resentment is the number one. Look, think about this. What is most of the time when we're miserable, what is it related to? Think about it. <laughs> it's related to people, right? This is the problem. It's our thinking, right? It's our, it's our ego, easing God out, easing a higher consciousness out. You know, when I talk about a creator, a higher consciousness, sometimes people have a situation with that and a feeling about that. Look, when we're into the self, we're making ourselves a higher power. Just like the body physically is made in perfection, our minds and our, we were meant to be joyous and happy. This is the way we were meant. If you're not joyous and happy, you're taking upon yourself to say, again, like I said, that you have to get people to like you. It's all about the ego, the jealousy, the envy, all of these things and the pride, the pride. So the thing is that, that when we get centered and we just relax, and even with our addiction to the alcohol, food, and drugs, we won't need to go that anymore. We'll intuitively know. So again, say today, I'll give you a perfect, look, to give you a direct example, say today you're thinking, oh, I got to go get a job. When we get centered and we bring in the love and tolerance and patience and we get out of the self, then we don't, we go out and we feel the vibration. So we're even going to read in here about dealings with people and all of that. Again, we'll have to do this, I think, in a few sessions. And then, and then the answer will come to you. And the answer I would find is, hey, it doesn't matter what other people say, think, or do. I'm going to go out there and get a job. And if I'm rejected, I'm rejected. It's all part of life. But when we're in the self, we can't, we can't do anything. We can't do anything, you know. I, I just want to say this one thing. Where I live here in New York, there's a lot of, a lot of meetings, and, and a lot of people were go had you know uh, would go work or, like on the financial district, whatever. So guys would come in, they were down and out, they didn't have any jobs, they didn't have this, and they 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 worked these steps in this program. And other people in the in the meetings would help them, and you know help, help them get a job. And they became very very successful. Of course, a lot of jobs like you know it's it, sometimes it's sales or whatever it is. Like, the amazing thing is not that we're looking for that material success but things just come to us in life 
when we work these steps and we become more spiritual because then you could be a salesman and not worry about rejection or things that happen in life, right? In other words, you go out, a person with a big ego and maybe a perfect person to know how to do sales, but if they have a big ego and they get rejected, they can't go out and do it again. Same thing in life. When life, you know, when we surrender to this program, I always say here, life surrenders to us. All these feelings, resentments, and anger, even though in Bill's story he talks about the most impossible domestic situations rioted, feuds and bitterness wiped out, all of these different things. I know I'm going all over with this, but you know what? It all comes down to one thing. When we let go and we surrender, and step 12 says, having had that spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. By the way, the other steps here are the practical applications. Uh, well, actually, steps eight and nine are working this when you go out and you you know, you know, you go and talk to people and, you know, make an apology, if you know, whatever it is, a, you know, an amends for what you had done. But let me tell you this, look, this whole thing with amends, when you get centered and you're spiritual, people look at you one moment, you know, we have readings about that, and then, then they'll just see the difference in your disposition. They'll try to push your buttons, it won't work anymore. So it's one thing to go, you know, I hear people, I made an amends, I made amends, but the next day they're back to the old self. When you work these steps and you get them in your heart, then, then everything will surrender to you. Then you won't even have to say somebody amends. They'll take one look at you. And they'll try to get you upset and they'll see a different person there. They'll try to do their old thing. Or you'll try to, you won't be doing your old thing anymore because it doesn't become about you anymore. It's us. But 62, actually go to page 62. That tells us what the problem is. On page 62 it says, selfishness, self-centeredness. Again, there, there's a whole vibration, a, a higher consciousness out there. There's love, peace, and everything in the world, but we want to, we carry the world around on our shoulders, right? So here it goes. Driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking. So I never could resolve the problem until I realized what the problem was. When I came into this meeting, I did step one. I realized it was paralysis. I always thought, hey, look, if somebody, if I was resentful towards somebody or was I upset with them, I had a right to be, look what they did. Because it's coming from the perspective of the self. You know, we're talking about six and seven. What does six and seven talk about, right? Humility. Humility is step seven. Step, step six as the willingness. So humility means when I can go about life and not care. You know, they always people say, I don't want to be treated like a doormat or I have to stay away from, they say, toxic people. Whatever they say. Uh, you could treat me like a doormat because you know what? It has nothing to do with me because it's hurt people hurt people. And when I have that perspective and I accept people for the way they are, and we're going to read the sick man prayer, that's the way I'm going to end up, then, then the whole thing changes. But the next paragraph here, I'm doing this pretty quickly because, you know, again, this is a simple program. But on the next paragraph, it says, that, so our, just on page 62, so our troubles we think are basically of our own making. There's a spiritual awakening. If anybody here thinks that that the, the, the troubles are somebody else's uh, making, then then it's not going to work out. I didn't realize again with I realize now the problem was me. Was the problem was Bob. So when I go through life now, when I see it's my perspective. Ninety five percent of the things in life are perspective. When I change, I had the spiritual awakening. Work these steps and how it works. It explains it all in this one chapter, chapter five. Simple, simple program. When I got out of Bob and let go, and, and you know, they talk about in Eastern philosophy, the Tao, the feeling of vibrations, universe, they have certain deities and other religions. When I put my faith in something else beside, outside of me, then, then things came together. But that's the way we created. We weren't created. Look, our minds and our intellect was given to us by a higher, higher power, whatever, God conscious, you know. But we misuse it like everything else. We take it upon ourselves. Look, if somebody's going to put a gun to your head, then you should be in self-centered fear. But otherwise, we use it. Look how crazy we are. We use it the way, you know, people look at us and what they say to us. Imagine that. And we're wondering why. Why am I so depressed when we're going around? You know, it's like being a puppet on a string. We let people control us. So anyway, I, I call it being imprisonment. And I went to a lecture once and the guy said that he said, look, he said, you could walk out of this prison right now. Right here, right now at this meeting, you can walk out of the prison if you get out of the cell. Everything you related to, every upset today, depression, anxiety is related to, like it would be related to me, Bob. Oh, what's Bob going to do? Pour, you know, I had the saying in, in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, pour me, pour me another drink, right? In this meeting here, you know, we'll have that revelation. We realize that we don't have to be in self-pity, you know, in self, self-centeredness. self It's not about that. I had just read about that. So anyway, on the bottom page 62, it tells us uh, the answer. What did I say before? I said, let go, let a higher consciousness is in, or let God. And that's exactly, if you want the solution to all your problems, if you read the bottom of page 62, it says, this is the how and why of it. First of all, we had to put, quit playing God. This is the whole thing in life. We wanted to control everyone and everybody. We wanted to play God. 
God was going to be our director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father. We are his children. Most good ideas are simple. Again, most good ideas are simple. Now, going back to this is God consciousness. It's like in a lot of, it's like a parent. When we were kids or younger, a lot of times we put faith in our parents would take care of us. But the thing is in life, in the way life is, look, they talk about it in the Bible verse about the lilies of the field, the birds. They, you know, they don't dwell on how they're going to take care of themselves, but they're taken care of. And life is the same way. But when we try to take control, it all goes to naught. You know, I, I use that example of the centipede was racing another, another insect, a four-legged insect. So they're having a race. So the, 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 the insect with four legs, figure this guy has a, th uh, a thousand legs or a hundred legs. So how am I going to win the race? But he came up with an idea. He, told, he said to the centipede, look, this is what I want you to do. I want to know how you manipulate all those legs. So I want to know how you win the race. So he said, look, as you're going and as you're racing, please try to memorize and figure out exactly how you put one foot in front of the other. This is the way we run our lives. So the race started and sent the peak couldn't move, right? This is we, we come from the self and the ego and we wonder why we're in situations and we can't resolve them or some, you know, somebody cuts us off on the highway, clerk in a store.